hello pattern lovers welcome to yet another exciting tutorial and today's video will be a detailed tutorial on how to draft and cut a mermaid skirt with a cut together train so if that is what you want to learn kindly watch this video to the very end and let's get right into it So I have my pattern paper ready, I have my measuring tape, my pattern master and the pencil and I also have a starting point line which I already have on the pattern paper. I'll start from that point and go down to my hip measurement, that's the hip line and I'm using 9 inches. Then from that point I'm going to go down to my actual knee length from the waist, from my waist to my actual knee, knee length which is 22 then i'm going to minus 3 inches making it 19 right so if yours is 21 that means you're going to do 18 inches just measure from your waist to your knee exact your exact knee measurement then you're going to minus 3 inches like go up 3 inches from that point if that is um not confusing to you Whatever your actual knee length is, either from the shoulder or from the waistline, just go up 3 inches from that point. Then for the length, you're going to measure from your, like from your shoulder to the ankle length or from the um, waist to the ankle length. Then you're going to add extra 6 to 7 inches, depending on how much you want it to sweep. Um, yeah, depending on how much sweep you want, right? So here I have the waistline, the hip line, and knee line, and then the skirt length or the full length. On the waistline, I'm going to just mark my hip measurement divided by 4. Okay, I'm going to mark the same thing on the hip, mark the same thing on the knee, and mark the same thing on the length. Your hip measurement divided by 4. Then I'm going to just connect it like this. So after that, I'm now going to come to the waistline and take my waist measurement divided by 4. If you'll be adding that, it's important that you add your data allowance at this point. Then I already have my hip measurement divided by 4 on the hip. Then coming to the knee, I'm going to come in 2 and half. I'm going to tighten the knee by 2 and half. That's like minus 10 inches from my hip line. The hip measurement is 40. So coming in 2 and half means I'm minus 10 inches. When I measure it, you see that I have 7 and half at this point. So if I do um, 2 inches, I would have 8 inches here, meaning that I minus 8 inches from my hip line. But here, I want to use 2 and half to tighten the knee, like coming in 2 and half from the line I have there. This is just the best way to go about the knee tightening for your mermaid skirt. You can actually do 3 inches or more, depending on what you want. But then another important thing to note is that if you'd be wearing the dress with a hip pad, you know all those extravagant hip padding that focuses only on the hip you know that doesn't blend into the knee it's just important that you minus this 8 inches or 10 inches from your natural hip measurement okay like your natural hip circumference that way it will not create any form of tension on the knee area let's talk about that later for now i'm going to connect from the waist to the hip and to do that i'll go up one inch from the hip line and go down one inch again from the hip line and you see the line i marked across I'm going to connect from the waist to the first one inch I came up from the hip line. Then I'm going to connect from the second one inch I came down from the hip line to the knee measurement. Okay. And this is simply contouring the hip line or blending in the hip line so that it's not too sharp or too pointy. Then for the full length, I already have my hip measurement divided by four, which is the line we mark across before now. Now from this line, I'm going to add extra seven and a half that's how much how wide i want it to be on the front we don't want the front of your mermaid skirt to be too wide okay to avoid any tension on the knee part you don't want it too wide the wideness should be going to the back you know the larger part of the wideness should be going to the back so you want to add between five to eight inches you can also do 10 inches anyway but make sure you contour or blend in the knee very well so that it's not creating any tension or those pleats you see around the knee the side knee of some mermaid skirt now to blend in the knee proper i'm going to go up half inch from the knee line and come down half inch from the knee line too and mark it across this way 
then i'm going to get the knee tightening again on these lines okay whatever i have previously on the knee line i'm going to mark it on this new these two new lines then i'm going to blend in from the hip again to the first one the half inch we came up from the knee line i'll clean up the previous line then just connect it this way then i'm going to use my ruler to connect from this point the second half inch we came down from the knee line connect a half inch to the seven and a half i went in um as the wideness for the front and then to blend in the knee proper i'm going to use my french curve and place it the same way you see me do it here and then blend it can you see that it's already already looking so cute <laughs> and this is what the down part is looking like now i'll be blending in the down part you know covering it so that it's not too sharp and i will be going up one and a half you can also do just one inch if you want then on that point i'm going to make sure i have my seven and a half doing this on my own i would have just marked eight inches initially so that by the time i came up one and a half i would have my seven and a half on that point but i didn't want to confuse you just so you understand where we are headed so i'll make sure i have my seven and a half on that point then I'll blend in from that one and have I came up to this um, the going to the center part of the skirt this way. Okay, it's as simple as that. Then I will have to connect again from the knee to this point that I made sure I have my seven and a half. Okay, to make it very easy for you, like I said before, just mark add half inch. If it's seven and a half you want to do on the down part as the fullness just mark your eight inches there so that by the time you came up one and a half you will still have your seven and a half there but if it will confuse you just do it this way i should do that's actually the goal not to confuse you okay so this is what it looks like from up to down then on the waistline since i'm not going for that um if you want to add that you just have to mark your bust span measurement then the front that is usually between three inches to five inches for most adults but since i'm not going for that i'll just be coming down here by 0 0.75 you can come down one inch if you want okay then on the side i'm going to go up 0 0.25 even if you're doing this as a gown um i wanted to say you know all those uh, inbuilt corset thingy just go ahead and come up here 0 0.25 or half inch then if you're not doing that you come down between half inch to one inch um from the center and then you can now add your allowance on the pattern if it will be there for you but just go ahead and cut it out because you're basically done with the front to you to my and after cutting it out you can see how cute and mermaid it's looking <laughs> it's already looking like something that would come out so well then if you want to know how many years you use i measured and i have about 17 and a half which is 35 and then you're adding your stitching allowance which is like one yard for the front only then the back is going to take like one and a half to two yards so you know that you have to use three yards to two and a half for your moment scale depending on how much sweep okay now for the back pattern i just went ahead to have those our waistline hip line knee line then for the extension the you know the train i have 15 inches extra can you see that like 15 from where my measurement the actual skirt measurement will be starting i added 15 inches and it's going to the center back okay so what i'm going to do here is on the waistline i'm going to go in one inch then now from that one inch i'll take my waist measurement divided by four i'll come to the hip i already have my hip measurement then on the knee you remember we used two and a half to tighten the knee for the front now for the back i'm going to divide that two and have into two you can decide to share it equally on both sides of the knee like the center back and the side but what i'm going to do is to mark one inch on this um center back this way then i will be marking one and a half on the side this way that way 
we already have our two and have knee tightening okay so i will mark it on both lines i have on the knee one inch on this on the center and one and a half on the side like i said you can decide to do 1.25 on the center and 1.25 on the side depending on what you want but um i just want to do it this way one inch on the center one and a half on the side then i'll connect it like this then on the center i will connect from that one inch i went in on the waistline to the hip line the first hip line then from the third or second hip line i'll be connecting from that point to the one inch i came in on the knee and you see the shape then on the down part i'm simply going to add the same seven and that we used for the front but i'll do it how i would have done it um on the front so i'm going to mark eight inches so i don't have to be marking seven and a half later after connecting then i'm going to connect from the knee line with my long glue from the knee line all the way to that eight inches and you see that when i come up one and a half to blend in the down part i wouldn't have to be uh, marking the same seven and a half on that point okay blending the knee this way then come to the down part from the skirt length i'll be extending the length by seven inches you can do more if you want remember the skirt is already long enough if you want it really the um those long train you can do from anything between 15 to 30 inches depending on how much you want it okay and depending on the kind of fabric you're using also but for me i want to just do seven inches so i'll mark it on both ends and connect it like this then I would go to the side this way the initial skirt length and blend it in by one and a half just like we did for the front i'll come up one and a half this way then i already have seven and a half there which is just fine you can decide to just come in um three inches from that point and curve it blend it in but i'll be using what i have here which is seven and a half so from that seven and a half now I will now be blending it in to the seven and that we extended uh, the seven inches we extended the length and here i'm trying to show you that you can also place in your curve this way to curve it to give it you know a nice curve but what i have there works just fine for me then i'm going to just freehand you can also use your curve if you want um use your curve to blend it into the seven and half we extended the length the back length just like this just like this like i said before you can decide to freehand it whichever way you want it and whichever way would give you better results just go ahead and do it and once you're satisfied with whatever you have on this down part like once you're satisfied with the curve you're simply going to cut it out and it's looking good but i want to like still blend it in on this point so that it's not looking weird like i said before you can decide to extend it all the way to the length that you want how much sweep you want and just give it this same curve you see it here okay it's as simple as that then i'm going to cut it out the same way you see me doing it here so after cutting out the down part i'll come back to the knee on the center back i'll come down um one inch from the knee length i already have there i will come down half inch you can decide to go up if you want but i only go out if i tighten the knee too much aside that i come in, i come down one inch or even one and a half from the knee so if you go up go up from the knee it's going to create some ease like you're going to give the knee area ease the more but have it in mind that the front and back knee length is not it's not the same like it's not really going to be the same length because of the butt let's say you tie something around your natural waistline and you also tie something on your knee and then you measure from the ribbon to your knee length on the front and then do the same thing on the back you see that the because of the butt the back knee length is going to be longer so for you to have that fish look or that mermaid look on the back you have to come down from the knee instead of going up but if you want some ease go up from the knee i hope i'm not 
confusing you the more but just do what you want on this back either you go up or you leave it exactly as it is on the knee or you come down but i usually come down one inch to one and out depending on how much i want it to tighten or how much flat i want it to look on the back you know the knee okay so after all of that i'm going to now add my zipper allowance one inch on the waist 1.25 on the hip and then half inch on the knee that's just how i go about the zipper allowance on the center back okay so one inch on the waist 1.25 on the hip and then half inch on the knee i'm not also adding that to the back skirt you can decide to add that if you don't want it on the front you can decide to do um add that to the back skirt but i don't want that then you can also place your curve this way to contour it the more to give it that butt contour if you want then you blend it into this part or better still you just extend that half inch all the way to the down you know half inch from the knee all the way to the down if you want so because of the 1.25 i did on the hip it will create some ease for the butt so that or no that it will still create some ease and you know give it that butt shape or that butt look is supposed to give okay then to um further contour the waistline i'm going to go up on the size 0 0.25 and on the center back i'm going to come in half inch just like this then i'll extend it my initial measurement on the side to that 0 0.25 then place my curve this way to curve it from that 0 0.25 to the half inch i came down on the center front this is to avoid that sharp point but if you are just doing this as, as a skirt this is important if it's a corset for corsets you know you don't want it to point on the back for your corset but if it's just a skirt you can even go up half inch on the center back so that by the time you sit down your underwear won't be showing i hope you understand then you're simply going to cut it out this way i don't know if i mentioned when i was um blending in this part that i cut out now but i just came up one inch on that point and blend it into going to the center part of the skirt like the other part of the skirt that way it's not too pointy the sweep part of the skirt is not pointy on that point okay so this is what it looks like after cutting it out and no doubt you know that this came out too well and it's going to give you what it's supposed to give you by the time you transfer this to your fabric you're going to cut this on fold and then you cut this um this is going to be two piece the back then the front is going to be on fold except if you're going for a particular design but the front is usually on fold and then the back you cut it two piece two pieces so cross check your pattern like match it up this way on the side to see if you have what you're supposed to have either you do it this way or you simply place it place the uh, front on the back this way and then match it up make sure the knee and the hip line are matching up and then if you are sure you're going to transfer it to your fabric and happy sewing so here comes the end of our story today do let me know if you gained something and i will see you in my next video bye bye